Okay, thank you. Um, I'm 80. I am from Montana State University, and I'm going to talk today about something a little bit different than all of the other talks that we've heard today. I'm going to talk about a technique that we use novel microbial technology to um, seal leakage pathways in the subsurface. So managing flow and transport in porous and fractured media by inducing calcite precipitation, essentially making biocement. I have worked for a number of years at the Center for Biofilm Engineering studying the use of microbes for beneficial technology. So that's where this technology has arisen. And as we all know, in the um, concern for carbon sequestration and also hydraulic fracturing is that one of our primary concerns for these technologies in terms of the environmental conditions is the idea of leakage. And so whether it's leakage through the cap rock or the near wellbore environment, um, one of the concerns with CO2 is that the CO2 could get into a functional aquifer causing problems to human health, also escape to the surface um, uh, loss of carbon credits under a cap-and-trade system. In hydraulic fracturing, uh, a, a number of major concerns. Um, first, that if the uh, company is going through all the expense of drilling this well and trying to extract the fluids, leakage to the surface is not something they want. They want to be able to capture all the methane that they are intending to gather. Um, additionally, we have the idea of functional aquifer damage and uh, also with methane, the leakage to the, sub leakage to the surface could result in a um, significant contribution to global warming because of the global warming potential of methane. The common method to repair these leakage pathways in, well, in the near wellbore environment is the use of cement. So cements, though, still have a high viscosity and, um, and can have increased pressures to, uh, to put the cement into the subsurface. And so the use of microbes shows a promising application because these microbes are very small and can penetrate small aperture fractures, which still may be a significant leakage pathway for gas. The microbes that we study in our laboratory are a uh, microorganism called Sporocyna pasteuri. It's a common soil bacteria. It contains an enzyme or it produces an enzyme called urease. And the urease will contribute to the hydrolysis of urea to form uh, ammonium and hydroxide, additionally carbonic acid. The hydroxide shifts the pH of the solution causing the, equal, the equilibrium of the carbonate to move towards bicarbonate and carbonate. In the presence of the sufficient activity of calcium and carbonate, the saturation index becomes favorable for calcium carbonate precipitation. So essentially these microbes, on the image on the right hand side, you can see a calcite uh, precipitate and the microbes are um, stained with a red and green dye. And the, Microbes are associated with the calcite mineral. They induce the calcium carbonate precipitation very near the mineral. And they also then become entombed and encased in the mineral itself. So this can lead to a diffusion limitation where the microorganism is actually not able to get nutrient and oxygen and the urease is not able to get out. So that can lead to decreased ureolytic activity. And so we control that in our, in our um, technology by utilizing different injection strategies where we actually re-inject microorganisms to promote additional precipitation or re-stimulate or regrow the biofilm. We've moved from uh, laboratory scale to field scale in our, in our technology development and some of our initial experiments were performed in shale. We have a fractured shale um, core that is one inch in diameter. We have a Hassler type core holder and have studied these processes under high pressure conditions. The core is uh, fractured and then filled with propent, so we have about a one millimeter fracture. And microbes and calcium containing solutions are injected, alternating until the fracture permeability is reduced. And we've seen very promising reduction in permeability uh, up to five orders of magnitude in these cores. We moved then from the laboratory scale to in, in uh, one inch diameter to a more meso scale. We have a sandstone, sandstone core that is 30 inches in diameter. It has a two inch bore in the center where we have developed a, 
uh, double packer system so we can isolate certain heights in the zone of the, of the core. And during hydraulic um, characterization of this core, I broke my rock. And that wasn't the intent of the experiment. We wanted to study these processes under radial flow conditions. It's really a reactive transport problem. We have reaction occurring where urealysis and precipitation is occurring at the same time that you're flowing these fluids into the fracture. And um, so uh, this, this turned into lemonade, though, because now we study the uh, precipitation of calcium carbonate in these fractured zones and the ability to seal those fractures um, for, for leakage pathway sealing. In the far pictures on the right, you see fracture flow or dominated fracture flow before the treatment using these microorganisms. And then after treatment using the microbes, um, no fracture flow was observed. We've additionally studied these mesoscale processes under high pressure conditions. We've constructed a large high pressure vessel. Up in the upper right hand corner, you see the picture of the vessel. This vessel weighs about 8,000 pounds and is in our laboratory where we can study um, up to 1,400 PSI, 96 bar of pressure. So we are, are able to study these under relevant subsurface conditions. And I like to think of this as a birthday present rather than a black box because I like to think that there's going to be something exciting at the end of the experiment. And uh, in our first experiment, we injected the microbes and the calcium solutions and found that we were able to reduce the permeability over time and um, to the same conditions that we saw in the ambient condition experiments. So we terminated the experiment and uh, depressurized and drained the vessel and saw copious amounts of calcite precipitation in the region of the fracture. We also initiated a step rate test where we increased the wellbore pressure until, it, until the fracture reopened. And we found that the uh, fracture strength was three times the initial hydraulic fracturing strength. So this was promising that we were able to do this under a more relevant subsurface condition. It also taught us that before we went to the field that we might have to expect that this might take longer with more calcium pulses in order to seal that fracture. So we went to the field uh, with a little bit of preparation. In April of this last year, we set out to Alabama to answer the question, does this work outside the lab and does it work in the deep subsurface where we have um, not only formation fluids and other bacteria influencing the conditions, but we're also in non-sterile field environments and um, uh, developing these processes for uh, actual implementation in a, in a commercial or more um, scaled, up, scaled up situation. Our collaborator is at Southern Company at the Gorgas Power Plant outside of Jasper, Alabama, have a well that was available to us, made available to us, it's drilled to 4,800 feet below ground, and it's entirely cased. And the zone of interest that we had determined we wanted to try this technology was at 1,120 feet. So cl uh, collaborators at Schlumberger packered off the zone of interest and uh, perforated and then stimulated the formation to create a fracture. It was estimated that the fracture was a horizontal fracture that was pancake shape. We utilized a uh, 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 Baylor injection technology, which is a conventional oil field um, technology. We delivered concentrated solutions of calcium and also um, uh, the microbes into the subsurface using this baler. It had a shear pin at the bottom that when it hit the collar stop at the bottom of the well, it would open and deliver the contents of the baler into our horizontal fracture region. And um, uh, then t down the tubing string, we injected brine to dilute those concentrated solutions from the baler into that fracture region. And um, as I mentioned previously, this is a reactive transport problem, so we have reaction occurring as the flow is going out. Um, we used a, a pulse injection strategy where we would actually inject and then let the um, system sit for a little while in order to uh, promote precipitation during periods of rest. We 
We were on site for a week, and for four days, we injected 24 calcium pulses and six microbial pulses. And um, we were also, there was some very promising results. First, we were able to collect only a few samples. In order to collect a sample, we had to lay down the delivery baler. In the bottom right, you see the workover rig sitting on top of the wellhead, and a, a Schlumberger employee in the man lift, he's filling the delivery baler. And every time we would switch to the sampling, um, it, you can see I'm collecting a sample in the upper left there, we would have to lay down the delivery baler, and that was a significant amount of time to change those balers over. So we were only able to collect three samples. We collected one at the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end of the experiment. And one of the positive things that we found was that we actually uh, recovered our microorganism that we injected. And if you look at the plate, the auger microbial plate there in the bottom, the tan microbes are the, um, are the organisms that are uh, sporus or cyanopasteurized. So they had plenty of competition with other microbes in the subsurface. So it was good that they uh, were active and we were able to recover them. The experiment resulted in the um, a reduction in injectivity. We had a pump that was able to go down in flow to only 0.14 gallons per minute. And so we would pressure, uh, we would pressure up the tubing spring, string after delivery into the, um, into the zone of interest, and not, we weren't able to inject any more fluids into the subsurface. So we feel like we sealed that fracture. We also had a positive result that we had a result in a loss of pressure decay. That means that every time we shut in the well, we would monitor the pressure fall off. And uh, we would only do a kind of mini mechanical integrity test where we would monitor that for five minutes. And at the beginning, it was 35% pressure fall off. And at the end of the experiment, it, re it was reduced to 7%. And then finally, at the end of the experiment, we refractured and saw that the fracture extension pressure had increased after we had performed the treatment with MICP. So we have studied these under a laboratory scale and moved into now the field scale with some application that suggests success in the field scale for sealing uh, fractures. We've studied this under relevant subsurface conditions and now under materials such as shale and sandstone. And our current and, and future work is really moving this into the idea of studying wellbore integrity. So the uh, uh, loss of pressure fall off was a, was a great thing to have, to, ha to have happen in the field. So we now are st starting to move towards the study of wellbore integrity and improving mechanical integrity. Here we have in the top right the MSU College of Engineering sticker tagged onto the top of the Gorgas wellhead. So um, I don't know if Southern Company let that stay. This is a collaborative effort. Our funding is from the U.S. Department of Energy, Shell, Southern Company, and Schlumberger, and it's really an effort of a large number of, of researchers, Robin Gerlach, Al Cunningham, Lee Spangler, and, um, and others. So with that, I'd like to mention that there are other applications of um, microbially induced calcium carbonate precipitation and different technologies out there that could be utilized, and um, I'd be happy to take any questions. So that's a very good question. See, these microbes are uh, called mesophiles. They only like medium temperature. So this would be limited to about 40 degrees C. We're currently looking for microbes that can exist under higher temperature conditions. And there's also the idea of um, utilizing enzyme, just pure enzyme, um, because that could be an alternative and they will last to higher temperatures. So how about, yeah. Exactly, same question. Yeah. Okay. Same so, So I've studied, um, I've studied urea hydrolysis under high pressure conditions up to 2,000 psi, and the hydrolysis, the kinetics of hydrolysis have not changed. So, um, so 
there's potential there, but then there's the temperature limitation. Okay. So are you imagining this might become part of the general procedure for wall closure? It's that that could be if the cement if the cement the cement job didn't finish off all of the small apertures, there could be a potential for this to come in and seal some of those smaller apertures that the cement could not 